Presenting the transcription feature, Superman! Look at the sky! Look! It's a bird! It's a plane! It's Superman! And now, Superman, mighty visitor from another world, who came to Earth when the planet Krypton was destroyed by quakes and explosions. Superman, who can twist steel in his bare hands, race a speeding bullet to its target, and who walks among human beings disguised as Clark Kent, news reporter for the Daily Planet. As our story opens, Kent has been called into Editor Perry White's private office. White has another visitor with him, a little silver-bearded old man who is immediately introduced to Kent. Listen. Oh, come in, Kent. I want you to meet an old friend, Professor A.B. Thorpe. Professor, this is Clark Kent, my star reporter. Oh, I'm glad to know you, sir. How do you do, young man? Uh, sit down, Kent. Make yourself comfortable. Thank you. Now then, do you know anything about ichthyology? Ichthyology? No, I can't say that I do. Well, Professor Thorpe will explain. Well, to put it simply, Mr. Kent, ichthyology, as you probably know, is the study of fish. In my case, the deep sea variety. Now, oh, I... then you're the Professor Thorpe who's invented a new type of bathysphere, sort of a deep sea diving bell? Yes, yes, I am. And well, that's why I called you in, Kent. The professor sails from Key West tomorrow to the island of San Monacan in the Caribbean Sea. He's going to do research on the tropical marine life in those waters. And you want me to get a feature story in the expedition? Well, I'm more interested in the bathysphere itself. From what I hear, there's nothing like it in the whole world. Oh, now you're exaggerating, Perry. Uh, but it, uh, it does contain a few new ideas. Suppose you tell Ken about it right now, Professor. Well, and take uh, notes on the story as you talk. Yes, uh, what's it like, sir? What are the new features you've invented? Well, for one thing, my bathysphere allows men great freedom of movement at the very bottom of the sea. Uh-huh. Well, just imagine a fully equipped scientific laboratory at the ocean bed. Uh -huh. Equipped with a system of safety doors allowing divers to walk right out onto the floor of the ocean. Deeper than man has gone before. I see. About how far down can you go with your bathysphere? Oh, easily a quarter of a mile. Hey, that's pretty good. The bathysphere is my life's work, Mr. Kent. And it represents a life saving. If anything should ever happen to it, I... I don't know I'd ever manage to build another. Uh, excuse me, Professor. Surely. Silly desk, White. Oh, hello, Sloan. What is it? What? You don't say. Left Key West this morning. Well, that's impossible. Telephone back for a confirmation. You've already done that, and the story is confirmed. Oh... Professor, I, I've got bad news for you. Uh, what is it, Perry? I heard you say something about Key West. That's where my ship, the Juanita, is docked. You mean that's where your ship was docked? What, what happened, Mr. White? Why, why do you say that, Perry? Why, what, what do you mean? That telephone call was from Sloan, yes. our teletype editor. We've just received word on our news ticker that your ship sailed from Key West a few hours ago. The, the Juanita sailed? <laughs> Oh, that's impossible. It can't be. There, there's some mistake. There's no mistake. We have a confirmation from the Key West Authority. But we weren't scheduled to leave until tomorrow. Juanita couldn't leave without me. Where, where could she have gone? Don't you have any idea, Professor? Well, Mr. Kent, I... I don't know anything about this. I, I don't know what to say. The bath is here was on board. All our equipment. All my private papers and charts. Mr. White, think... that ship has been stolen. You're right. Stolen? I'll notify the Coast Guard. They'll stop her before she gets far. No, uh, no, please. Uh, I, uh... I, I won't have the police drawn in. Uh, Why not, Professor? I, uh, I, I, I don't want that sort of publicity. I, I couldn't stand it. Well, in that case, there's nothing we can do. Oh, yes, there is, Mr. White. I have an idea. What is it, Kent? Is the Daily Planet seaplane still moored in the bay? Yes. Well, let me take it and pilot Professor Thorpe to Key West. We could overtake the one either before she gets far out to sea. Mr. Kent, that's a lifesaver. It's the only solution. Now, please, Perry. It's an idea. Well, it is my only chance to straighten this mess out without publicity. Perry, you, you have just got to help me. Oh, relax, Professor. Relax. Of course I'll let you have the plane. Can't we fly you down there immediately? Oh, thank you. Thank you, Perry. Thank you so much. Uh, come along, Mr. Kent. Hurry. Because there's no time to lose. We must get underway at once. There, Kent. Look. There's the one eater below us. Are you sure, Professor? Oh, absolutely. We're sufficiently low to make out enough to tail. Just for reckoning. Look there on the bridge. Uh, that must be Captain Maddox. Good. But that's a bandage on his head. He sees us. 
He's waving up at us. Ah, there, you see. I knew the ship wasn't stolen. I guess you're right. Well, we land. I'll put the plane down in the water close by. All right. Here we go. Kent, for heaven's sake. No danger, Professor. Just hold tight. Ah, well, here we are. Now we just wait here for your captain to send over a small boat to pick us up. Yes, and when I see him, he's going to get a piece of my mind. I want a complete explanation of this business. Yes, he has a lot of explaining to do. Uh, Kent, I say, can you see what those sailors are doing at the ship's rail? Oh, I guess they're launching the small boat. I can... No. Great, Scott, they, they've wheeled a gun up on oh, deck. Uh, what's that? A gun? Yeah, it's a small cannon. That... Why, so they... Uh, Professor Thorpe, it's being aimed straight at us. Look, you, you'd better stand up there near the motor in plain sight. Yell for them not to shoot. Oh, bless my soul, indeed I had. Captain Maddox, stop that. Don't fire. It's, it's I, Professor Thorpe. I can't, can't they, they, they don't seem to hear me. You're right, sir. They're getting ready to fire. They have fired. Oh. Hey, well, Scott, they almost hit us. Well, they only missed us by a few feet. Did you see a splash in the water there? Yes, and they've reloaded for another shot. You Get down! Are they mad? Jump, Professor! Jump! <laughs> Professor! Professor Thorpe! Why? Why, he hasn't come up. Hey, Scott, I hope he wasn't hit by that shell. Well, this is where Clark Kent gives way to Superman, and quickly. I'll have to work fast. Dive down after him. Here goes. <laughs> Down. Down faster. No time to lose for the life at stake. Where is he? It's hard to see through this murky water. I... Hold on. What's that? It looks like... Yes, it is. Professor Thorpe sinking to the bottom. He must have struck his head when he fell. Ah, got him. Now to bring him to the surface. Up! 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 I'm above the surface now. Thorpe's still unconscious. Fortunately, the coast is clear. Sailors are all on the other side of the ship where our plane went down. I'll have to take Thorpe on board. Up! Up! And away! Uh, Ken. Uh, say, Ken. Professor, you all right? Yes, I... I suppose so. I saw a little, little water. But what happened, Ken? How did you get me on board? Well, after I found you in the water, I pulled you over to the side of the ship. I found a rope and brought you up here on deck. A little first aid treatment and... Huh? Here you are. I see. Oh, Kent, I... I'm grateful. Someone's coming this way. Yes. A man with a bandaged head, wearing the captain's uniform. Yes. That's Captain Maddox. Maddox! Maddox! Come over here! Well, I'll be... Professor Thorpe. Were you on that seaplane I just sank? Yes, of course I was. Don't tell me you didn't recognize me. Word of honor, Professor. I'd never have shot at you if I had. You had no business firing on anyone, Maddox. And why did you report without me? Why, I was only following your instructions. My instructions? Confounded. What on earth are you talking about? Your telegram, sir, ordering yes. me to sail from Key West without you. But I never... And to fire on any craft that tries to stop us. Maddox, now one of us is insane. I never sent you any such message. Well, I got it. Got it right here in my pocket. Can't I? I can't make head or tail of this. Just a moment, Professor. Captain, you say you've got that telegram handy? Sure have, sir. Here. Read it for yourself. Thank you. He's right, Professor. What? Listen to this. Well, well what, what does he say? Captain Maddox, proceed to San Monacam without me. What? Strict orders to fire on any craft attempting to stop you. But I... We'll I... explain later. Signed, A.B. Thorpe. I never sent that telegram. Nobody sent it, sir. I got it's it. It's an outrage. It's a forgery of my name. I'm sorry, sir. I've got to get back to the bridge. Engine room's calling. All right. Keep right on your course, Maddox, and come to my cabin as soon as you get free for a moment. Wait a moment. What happened to your head? Why is it bandaged? Just a little accident, sir. Nothing serious. It looks serious, but you can tell me about it later. Come along, Kent. We'll go to my cabin. Okay, Professor. Say, hey, uh, what do you make of that telegram? I don't know, Kent. But it may mean that we're in for a peck of trouble. Someone there wouldn't be trying to get hold of this boat. Well, who do you think it might be? I haven't the faintest idea. How about Maddox? Are you sure he's trustworthy? No question about it. He came to me with the highest recommendation. Well, Professor, I'm sure Maddox is mixed up in this. Why do you say that? Well, look at the evidence. 
Who took the ship out of port? Maddox. Who gave the orders to fire on us with murderous intent? Maddox again. Well, right. And his only explanation is the telegram he claims to have received. Well, isn't, isn't that sufficient proof of his innocence? No, sir, it's not. He could have sent that telegram to himself. Kent, if you're correct, Maddox meant to kill us both. That's the way it adds up, Professor. Good heaven. Oh, there we are. This is my cabin. Oh. Uh, come in, Kent. No. Oh. Hold on a moment. Well, Kent, what's the matter? It might be nothing at all, but listen to that sound, that, that tapping. Yes. Yes, it seems to be coming from beneath the floor. What's down there, Professor? The hold of the ship. Storerooms, motors. Kent, you don't suppose... That tapping is a signal, Professor. I'm sure of it. Listen. And three short ones, three long ones, and three short ones over and over again. But Kent, that's the Morse code. Morse code for SOS. That means help. Come on, Professor. We've got to get down into the hold of that ship. Somebody needs help. Yes, yes, but who could it be? Well, that's what we've got to find out. Lead the way, Professor, quickly. Ken, Ken this is the most amazing turn of events. Hurry, Professor. No time to talk now. Do you think someone is really being held prisoner in the hold? I will. We'll know pretty soon. Let's hurry. Uh, here, here we are. Below deck. I'm not quiet. Listen. Tapping has stopped. Right. Oh, so it has. What do we do? Oh, I'll have to look around quietly. If someone is being held prisoner down here, we, we don't want to let the wrong people know that we're wise yet. No. All right. We split up and search the entire hole. Say, what's the matter with you, Kent? Hmm? What are you listening for? Oh, uh, Nothing. Nothing at all, Professor. Go on, you, uh, you take the forward end. Look among those boxes. And you? I'll uh, look around here. All right, Kent. Call me. If you find anything. All right. I almost gave myself away that time. I was listening to something. Heavy, labored breathing. It seemed to be coming from behind that steel partition. Wonder if there's a door there. There is a steel bulkhead door, but it's locked. No time to bother looking for keys. I'll have to twist it apart. Now then. There, that did it. Twisted the hinges. Now to force it open. There we are. Great, Scott. There's a man on the floor, gagged, bound, and blindfolded. Better change back to Clark Kent and free him. All right, all right, take it easy, mister. I'll have you free in a moment. There you are. Feel better? I sure do. Thanks, son. Thanks a lot. <clears throat> Are you the man who was tapping out that SOS? Yeah, but... How did you manage to do it? Oh, my feet. Nothing else I could use tied up like this. Hey, but who are you? Where did you come from? I... Hey, where are you? Hey. Oh, did you find anything? Yes, yeah, right here, Professor. What? Bless my soul. Captain Mather. What? Yeah, that's me, all right, Professor. But... But what are you doing down here out of uniform? And who tied you up like this? Oh, darn if I know, but I'll soon find out. You may later that, sir. But, Professor, th this can't be Captain Maddox. We left Maddox on the bridge a few moments ago. Huh? He had a bandage covering his head and face. Me? On the bridge with my face bandaged? Oh, no. I've been down here a night and a day, I reckon. Kent. What? What is this? Professor, are you certain this man is Captain Maddox? Of course it's Captain Maddox. But who is the man we spoke to on the bridge? The man with the bandaged head. I'm beginning to see now. Obviously, he's an imposter. That bandage was used as a disguise. Look here, Professor. Do you mind telling me what's going on here? And who is this young fellow? Captain, this is Clark Kent, a reporter who's making the trip with us. How do you do, Captain? Uh, how are you? Well, it's lucky we heard your signal on deck, isn't it? Uh. Uh, tell us how you got down here. Well, I was standing on the starboard deck last night when Sparks, the radio operator, came by. Yes, First thing I knew, someone slipped up behind me and cracked me on the head, and everything went black. I came to us down here, dressed up like a hog. Why, the scoundrel, that mutiny. This job appears to have been very cleverly planned. Go on, Captain. That's all there is to it. Been trying to get free ever since. Now, suppose you tell me your side of the story, young man. Well, it's short but interesting. Captain Maddox, the man on the bridge of this ship has fooled the crew into thinking he's you. What? Just as he fooled us. Well, I'll be... Well, why would he do that? Who is he? Well, we don't know, but it looks like there's a plot afoot to seize the ship and the professor's bathysphere, Captain. Well, that's piracy, young fellow. 
Where is that masquerading devil? Let me get my hands on him. Oh, he must be on the bridge. Professor Thorpe, we got to throw him in irons. Come on. I'm right with you, Captain. So am I. Let's uh, go. Get that slot. Sure. Sure. As the three men race up the companionway stairs to the deck, another scene is being enacted in the radio cabin, where Sparks and Wolf Cleland, who has been masquerading as Captain Maddox, are plotting together. Listen. Now, see here, Wolf. What do we do now that the professor and his pals are on board? There's only one thing to do. We'll have to get rid of them. Sure, but how? Don't worry. I'll find a way. There's too much money at stake to let go of it now. You bet. But we'll have to work fast. Yeah. They find Maddox down in the hole and tip off the crew as sunk. Say, maybe we ought to radio Escobar. Ask him what to do. He was going to call us, wasn't he? No, he hasn't called yet. I've been at this machine all day and there hasn't even been a chirp out of it. Wait a minute. Somebody's calling us. It sounds like Escobar. I'll give him the go-ahead. SS-1 leader answering. Come in, please. SS-1 leader answering. Come in, please. Hello, Sparks. Escobar. Everything under control? Come in. We got the ship, Pete, but Thorpe just came on board. What do we do? Come in. You two fools. What went wrong? Come in. He flew out after us. We took care of his plane, but the guy with him got up on deck. He fell for Wolf's telegram story, but he might get wise later on. Come in. Tell Wolf to put him out of the way. Both of them. Get rid of him for good. That's all for the present. I'll call you back later with more instructions. Signing off. Boy, Pete sounded plenty sore. Yeah, I heard him. Well, we'll have to go to work. Got your gun handy? Yeah. Holy smokes, look who's on deck. The professor and his pal. And Maddox. What do we do? Listen, they're coming after us, so let them come. As soon as they get inside, put your gun on them. Quiet. There they are, the rats. Come on, Kent, grab them. Look out, Captain. The radio operator has a gun. Stand back, you guys. Get your hands up or I'll shoot. Oh, no, you won't. I'll say that. Fuck, give me that. Fuck, fuck. Look out, Kent. Kent, are you hurt? No, I'm okay. This man keeps to have shot him. Oh, leave him be. Give me a hand. Give me a hand. All right. I got him. Put him in, fella. You don't have a chance. I'll see you both dead first. Oh, yes, that's true. I can stop it, I say. Professor Thorpe. Let go of him, Kent. You too, Captain Maddox. I'll handle this man myself. Oh, Pretty brave with that gun, ain't you, Professor? Yes, and I'll shoot you down like a dog if you try anything. Keep your hands up and get your back against the wall. Okay. Okay. Oh, well, nice work, Professor, but how did you get the gun? I dashed into my cabin when I saw the fight start. I thought a gun might come in handy. Ken, what happened to the radio operator? Uh, his, his revolver went off while I was wrestling with him. One of the bullets must have gone the wrong way. Well, let me have a look at him. Oh, Professor... He's badly wounded. You'll need immediate attention. Get somebody to carry him to a cabin and dress his wound. Say, Professor, Kent, look here. What is it, Captain? There's tattooing on Sparks' chest. It's an odd pattern. Here, look at it. Why, it's shaped like an octopus. Uh, It looks more like a map to me. Captain Maddox, did you say there's a map tattooed on that radio operator's chest in in the form of an octopus? Yes. See for yourself, Professor. No. No, uh, I'd rather not. Kent. Yes? Kent, op- open this other man's shirt and see, see if there's the same tattooing on him. Well, Professor, what's the matter? You look upset. Hey, Kent, do as I say. No, you don't. You'll keep your hands off me. Oh, hold still. You remember, I've still got this gun. Go ahead, Kent. Okay. Well, well, Kent, what do you find? Well, you guessed right, Professor. The same identical tattooing. Uh. Both of them with the same map and the shape of an octopus. What does it mean, Professor? Take the bandages off his head and face. Yes, let's see what he looks like. Hold on, you guys. I'll pull him off myself. Huh. Well, Maddox... Surprise? It's Wolf Cleveland. Guess you never knew how much we resemble each other, did you, Maddox? Do you know this man, Maddox? Know him? There isn't a man that ever sailed the Caribbean Sea that don't know him. Uh, he's one of the worst crooks that ever polluted these waters. Oh, no, we're getting somewhere. Cleveland, what's the meaning of these tattooed maps? Why were you and the radio man trying to seize the ship? That's my business, brother. You better talk now, Cleveland, for your own good. Piracy on the high seas carries a stiff penalty. Well, if you really want to know, ask Professor Thorpe. He can tell you. He has a mind to... Professor Thorpe. Professor, is this man telling the truth? Do you know why your ship was stolen? What these maps mean? Yes. I think I do now, Kent. Oh, for heaven's sake, tell us. What's this all about? Kent, I have a confession to make. You may as well know the truth now. I've been sailing under false colors. Really? Just a moment, Professor. It is Juanita. Come in. The radio. Someone's calling us. Here. Here's the switch. Let me take that, Captain. SS-1 Eater answering. SS-1 Eater. 
This is the SS Juanita. Come in, please. Hello, Spark. Escobar speaking. Have you taken care of Torp and the other one? Come in. What does he mean? Throw the switch. Tell him yes. Ask him. Ask him what to do now. Yes, we took care of them. What do we do now? Listen carefully. Here are the new instructions for you and Cleland. Everything depends on how you carry them out. Make a careful note what I am about to say. Running the SS Juanita. Running the SS Juanita. Come in. Throw the switch, Ken. Answer him. SS Juanita answering. Come in. Sparks, this is Escobar. Now listen close. Tell Cleland to bring the Juanita into port at Maneo at midnight. I want you both to meet me at the Paradise Cafe on the waterfront. You got that? Come in. Yes, I got it. Is that all? That is all right now. Cleland is to anchor the ship in a quiet section of the harbor, where it won't be seen. He'll get the rest of my orders when I see him at the cafe. Just don't make any more mistakes. Signing off. Well, what do you think of that, Professor? I hardly know what to say, Ken. Who is this Escobar person? I know him, Professor. You do, Captain? Well, who is he, Maddox? Well, I don't know him to speak to, but I've seen him. He hangs out at Wolf Cleland. And he's dynamite. Hey, by the way, where is Cleland? What? Oh, he was here a moment ago. Ken, Captain, he's escaped. <laughs> oh, no, he hasn't. I had him thrown into irons. Oh. Professor, are you sure you don't know why Cleland and Escobar are after your ship? No, Ken, I, I don't. A little while ago, you mentioned that you had a confession to make. You said it would clear up this mystery. Yes, I said that, but I was wrong. That confession is a private matter. I, I'd rather not talk about it now. I see. Well, then we're just as much in the dark about all this as we were before. Yes, I'm afraid so. Wait. I've got, I've got an idea. What? He's taking a chance, but it might work. And if it does, we'll get to the bottom of this mess. What is it, Ken? Look here. Cleland was able to masquerade successfully as Captain Maddox. With only a bandage covering part of his face, he fooled you and the crew. Yes, that's true. Well, then, what's to prevent Captain Maddox from masquerading as Cleland? Me pass as Cleland? Sure. Oh, that don't make sense. Oh, yes, it does, Captain. You and Cleland look very much alike. Well, we'll bandage up your face, and you and I will keep that appointment with Pete Escobar at the Paradise Cafe tonight. Oh, good guy. Splendid idea, Ken. Will you do it, Captain Maddox? Well, that's against for better judgment. But Ken, I reckon it will. If we don't stop that pirate now, we won't have a minute's peace when we reach San Monica. Good. Thank you, Matt. That's the spirit, Captain. Now you better call the engine room and order full speed ahead. Yes, sir. Not much time left. We're going to keep that date. Hello, Higgins. Higgins. Captain Maddox speaking. Full speed ahead. Pile on all the steam to carry. We're heading due west to Maneo, and we've got to get there before midnight. <laughs> the Paradise Cafe, huh? It certainly looks like a tough joint. Yeah. What time is it, Captain? It's, uh, just midnight. Uh-huh. And there's Pete Escobar himself Hi. looking towards us. The big man with a scar on his cheek? Yes, that's him. I hope my disguise works. Well, these dim lights and the heavy cigarette smoke will help. Hello, Cleland. You been in long? No, I just arrived, Pete. You've got your face covered with that bandage, eh? I am, it makes you look like Maddox. Say, who is this mug you got with you? Clark Kent's my name. What'd you bring him along for, Wolf? Well, uh, I just thought It's this that... way, Escobar. I'd like to join your outfit. Yeah, he's a handy sort of guy, Pete. I thought we could use him. What's your trade? Well, I, uh, I'm a deep-sea diver. Oh, deep-sea diver, huh? Eh? Maybe we can use you. Come into the back room. We can talk better in private. All right. Sit down, Ken. You are off Torp's boat, the Juanita, eh? Yes. You know anything about that deep sea diving belly the Batisphere? Well, sure. That's why he hired me. I operate it. Well, that's perfect, Cleland. Just the man we're looking for. You're working for me now, Kent. Okay. What's the job? What are you going to do with Torp's Batisphere? Didn't you tell this guy what's on the fire, Cleland? No, I didn't tell him a thing. Well, Kent, we're after gold. What? Two million dollars of it. Laying down at the bottom of the ocean. Gold? Two million dollars? Yes, sir. And that's where you and Torx Batisphere come in. 
But we let that go until later. Where'd you leave the ship, Cleveland? About a quarter mile offshore, just like you said. Good. Now listen. I got 20 guys out there in the bar room. The top of smoke I could find. As soon as we finish up here, we'll go out to the harbor and take over the one eater. Lock, stock, and barrel. How are you going to take 20 men out to the ship? I got a big speedboat tied up at the pier. Right. Well, what about the ship's crew? What are we doing? Them? Dead men don't talk, Cleveland. We'll take them off guard and tie them up. When we get out to sea, we'll toss them overboard. Hmm. Incidentally, what did you do with Thor? Uh, oh, we finish him. He won't bother us anymore. See who that is, clear. Oh, wait a second. I'll go myself. Kent, look who's at the door. Cleveland. Yeah. He escaped from the ship. Yes, and he's telling Escobar who we are. So, Captain Matt. Yeah, what's up? Trying to put something over and feed Escobar, eh? Now look here, Escobar. Shut up. I'm going to get my boys and let them work over you. Kent, they trapped us. You're right. A gang of his will be here in a minute. Yeah, but what do we do, Kent? They'll kill us. They'll tear us to pieces. Get over by the door. I'm going to smash the electric light. The darkness will cause confusion when they get in here. All right, Kent, hurry. Now then. Maddox can't see me. It's high time Superman took charge here. I hate to do it, but I'll have to knock Maddox unconscious in order to take him out of here with me. I'll wait for the gang to get in and time the punch so he won't know who hit him. Kent, here they come. Okay, boys. Get in there. Mess him up good. Now, they're in. This is my chance. Kent, help! Help! Oh. Ah, that did it. Knock Maddox cold. Now to sling him over my shoulder and get out while these thugs flounder around in the darkness. No use fighting my way past this mob. I'll smash through the wall. Here we go. Ah, we're through. And there's the harbor below me. Now, back to the ship. Up! Up! And away! Red cloak streaming in the wind, Superman rockets through the night. Out across Manila Harbor to where the Manita rides at anchor like a ghost ship in the moonlight. Swiftly, Superman streaks down and lands on the deck. Down, down to the deck of the ship. Down. Oh. Captain Maddox, how do you feel? Oh, pretty shaky, Kent. What happened? How'd you get me back to the ship? Well, after you were slugged, I managed to get hold of you and, and pull you out and... Out of that room full of killers? Well, yes, it wasn't as difficult as it sounds. <sighs> they were fighting each other in the dark. And I just slipped through them. Kent, Captain Maddox. Oh, you're back. Cleveland escaped. Yes, we know, Professor. He's at the cafe. We just got out by the skin of our teeth. Kent, there's news for you, Professor. His scheme worked. You, you've learned why Escobar and Cleveland want my ship? It's not the ship, Professor. It's the bathysphere, the deep-sea diving bell. They need it to go down after sunken gold. Sunken gold? Yes. Funny, but I suspected that. You suspected it? But how? I might as well confess now, Kent. I'm going after that gold myself. You're what? Oh, I'll be hanged. Yes. That was the confession that I couldn't make before. I couldn't make it until I was certain Escobar was after the same thing. But, Professor, I, I thought this expedition, the bathysphere, was to do research on marine life, strange fish. No, and... that story was false, Kent. I made it up to avoid the publicity that would follow if people learned that, that I was after millions in gold. Where did this gold lay, Professor Thorpe? At the bottom of Octopus Bay, 300 feet below the surface. I suspected that Cleland knew about the treasure the moment I saw that tattooed map on his chest. But I had to be certain. But, Professor, it doesn't seem possible that, that you're just a fortune hunter. Oh, not believe me, Kent, I'm not. When I tell you why I need that gold, you'll understand me better. I discovered the sunken Spanish gold ship 30 years ago. But how could you if she's down that deep? That time I was younger, Captain. One day I went down in a diving suit after tropical fish. I descended further than I've ever gone before. And I saw the hull of the ship beneath me. But it was impossible to stand the pressure. So I returned to the surface. Oh, then you can't be sure the gold is actually on board. Yes, Kent, it is. I investigated. I read ancient manuscripts until I came across one that told of the sinking of the galleon La Quinta in Octopus Bay near the island of San Monicum during the year 1786. She carried over two million dollars in gold. And not one penny of it was ever recovered. I see. But you said you had a reason for needing the gold. To build a laboratory, Kent. The greatest scientific institution ever created. A place where scientists could work for the betterment of mankind, unworried by any thought of finances. That's been my life's dream. And with the gold from that treasure ship, I could make that dream come true. Professor, if that's what you want it for, I'm with you. Yes, and so am I. Thanks. 
Both of you. I knew I could depend on you. That sound can't off in the darkness. What is it? Oh, sounds like a speedboat coming this way. It's a launch, Kent. See it? All of our port bow. A launch? Professor, it's Pete Escobar and his gang. What? They're coming to take over the ship. No. Oh, hi, Lorena. Stand by for the boarding party. That's Escobar, all right. What do we do? Uh, they're too close. We can't get away. I know it. Oh, we're lost. They'll kill every one of us. Kent! Kent! Captain! Captain Maddox, can't we get a steam and escape? Not a chance, Professor Thorpe. That speedboat's too fast. She does 20 knots to our cannon. Oh, my life's worth thrown away. Kent, isn't there something we can do? Wait. I've got it, Professor. That small cannon cleared and fired at us. We can hold them off with that. Yes. Yes, the cannon. I'll go with you, Kent. All right. No. No, you stay here, Professor. I'll get one of the crew to help me. Very well, but hurry up, Kent. For heaven's sake, hurry. Now then, I'm out of sight behind the wheelhouse. Time Clark Kent made a quick change to Superman. Not a moment to lose. I'll have to get to Escobar and his speedboat before he reaches the Juanita. Up, up, and away! Faster, faster. Escobar will start shooting soon. Lives mean nothing to him. He wants Thorpe's diving bell. Ah, there's the speedboat directly below and in front of me. Good thing they can't see me in the dark. I'll dive into the water. Down! Down! Oh, I'll wait here underwater until the speedboat comes along. Ah, there it is. Now, up we go, right into the... Ah, that did it. Smashed the bow of the boat and capsized it. Dumped them all into the water. Now, back to the Juanita. Up, up, and away! Ah, there we are. Now, if I can find Professor Thorpe. Kent, 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 where have you been? Hi, all over the boat, Professor. I looked high and low for that cannon, but I couldn't find it. Well, fortunately, we don't need it now, Kent. You don't need it? No. Something miraculous has happened. Look out there where you last saw the speedboat. What? Why, it's overturned. Yes. Stove in. Escobar and his thugs are in the water clinging to the wreckage. Yes. It was a miracle, Kent. Nothing but a miracle. Just when I thought all was lost, their boat seemed to leap into the air. It turned turtle and threw them all into the sea. Well, how do you suppose it happened, Professor? I don't know, Kent. The boat must have struck us a bird's log. Huh, rather lucky for us, wasn't it? Yes. What are we going to do about those men? Leave them there. They won't drown. They won't get anything worse than a good soaking. But shouldn't we capture them, take them to the nearest port, and have them locked up? Oh, it might be dangerous fooling with them in the dark. And besides, I can't afford any publicity. If I press charges against Escobar, the story of the sunken gold might come out. Oh, then we're better off leaving them where they are. Exactly, Kent. Team is up, Professor Thorpe. Already to weigh anchor. Very well, Captain Maddox. Now, get the ship underway. I want to take advantage of every second that Escobar and his men are held up. We must reach Octopus Bay and the treasure without a moment's delay. Aye, aye, sir. We'll set a course for Octopus Bay and a forced draft. All right, deck watch. Weigh anchors. Aye, aye, sir. Oh. Yes, Mr. Kent? I was wondering, why do they call this body of water Octopus Bay? It's a name the natives gave it, Mr. Kent. Oh? Huh? Waters hereabouts are full of the slimy creatures. Well, say, in that case, isn't it a bit dangerous to send a diver down here? It's dangerous, all right. But it's the only way we can locate and recover the gold. But if the gold is 300 feet down, how can a diver withstand such terrific pressure? Professor Thorpe took care of that. Invented an improved type of diving suit for Gleason. He'll be able to alternate. Work ten minutes and rest ten minutes in the bathosphere. Yes, yes, Captain Maddox. I have it. I have it. I've what, Professor? I figured out the exact location of the gold ship. What? what? Captain Maddox, look at this geodetic chart. Yes, sir. Uh, draw a straight line from the very end of that point of land on our left to this spot I marked on the chart. Now, do you follow me? Yes, sir. Go on, Professor. Now, measure in on that line exactly 100 yards. Uh, got it. By my calculations, the Spanish gold ship should be on the ocean bed precisely at that point. Well, say, that, that's just about where we're anchored now, isn't it? Oh, well, yes. The one is almost directly above that spot, sir. Excellent, Captain. Now, is the bathosphere ready to be launched? All ready, sir. It's swung out over the side, prepared for submersion. Then we start working immediately. I'm going to confer with the diver. Get the oxygen pump started. And I'll be right back. Gosh, I've never seen Professor Thorpe so excited. Well, there's two million dollars in gold at stake here, Mr. Kent. I'm a little excited myself. I'll phone and get that pump started. Hello. Hello, Connolly. Start the oxygen pump. 
Mr. Cantor, let me have that chart, please. Oh, yes. Here it is, Captain. Thank you. Mm. 50 fathoms deep here. 300 feet. Yeah, that's a lot of water, isn't it? It's too much for my peace of mind, seeing as how the octopus always lives in deep water. Yes, yes, Captain Nutter. Professor Thorpe and Gleason, the diver, are over the bathysphere. Come on, Captain. Captain Nutter. Uh, is everything ready? Yes, sir. Oxygen pump is working. Should have built up enough pressure by now. Very good, Captain. Uh, you stay here on deck and supervise the lowering and lifting of the bathysphere. I'll go down with Gleason. Aye, aye, sir. Oh, say, hold on. What about me, Professor Thorpe? You remain on deck with Maddox. What? Kent. Help him with the airlines. Oh, now look, Professor, I want to go down with you. Oh, I'm sorry, Kent. It's not advisable. There may be danger. I'm not afraid, Professor. What? I wouldn't miss a trip to the bottom of the ocean for anything. I'm sorry, Kent, but it's out of the question. But, Professor, I've got to go with you. You know, Editor White assigned me to cover the operation of your bathysphere. I've got to get a story on the submersion. Uh, story, eh? Yes. Well, come along, then. Right through the steel door. I owe Perry White and you a great deal. Oh, thanks, Professor. Thanks. Oh, uh, one last thing, Captain Maddox. Yes, sir. We'll test the speaking tube and the airline at 50 feet. Yes, sir. I'll be standing by for your call. Good luck. Thanks, Thanks Captain. All right. Let her go. Into the murky green waters of Octopus Bay sinks Professor Thorpe's bathysphere. When the huge steel ball reaches 50 feet, it stops with a shudder and floats for a moment like a giant bubble. At the telephone, Thorpe signals the Juanita, riding at anchor above. Hello? Hello, Captain Maddox? Right here, Professor Thorpe. I can hear you perfectly. How's your air supply, sir? It's perfect, Captain. Are all your meters registering correctly? Everything okay up here, sir? Good. Pay out the cables, Captain. We're going on down to the bottom. Slowly. Slowly. Down, down through the eternal darkness. Further than man has ever gone before. 100 feet, 200 feet, 300 feet. Down into the inky dwelling place of the killer shark, the deadly octopus, and countless unnamed creatures of the deep. Gently, the huge bell settles on the bottom. In his diving suit, Gleason emerges from the bathysphere in search of the age-old Spanish treasure ship, leaving Canton Professor Thorpe to close the steel safety doors behind him. Listen. Professor, would you mind explaining how that safety chamber works? Just a moment, Kent. As soon as Grayson leaves the outer door in his diving suit... Okay. But how will you know when he does? The green light on the control panel will flash. There it is. He's outside now. Oh. Well, didn't the water rush into the chamber when he opened the outer door? Of course, Kent. But I took that into consideration when I designed the bathysphere. Oh, I see. <clears throat> Seems uh, a bit stuffy in here. Yes, it does. But uh, about the safety chamber, Professor... Well, as you know, the chamber has an inner and outer door, both of them strong enough to withstand tremendous pressure. Right now, the space between them is filled with water. Yes. But when I press this white button on the panel, compressed air forces the water out of the chamber and closes the outer door at the same time. I see. Listen. Oh, Professor Thorpe, it, it's amazing. Hey, well, what did you say, Kent? I said your, your diving bell is a, oh, it's a marvelous invention. I'm, I'm glad you like it, Kent. But my, <clears throat> my throat seems dry. Hand me the water bottle, please. Professor, is anything wrong? It must, must be the air. My, it's heavy. My throat feels dry and hot. Yes, it, it is growing hot. Here, have a drink. Kent, Kent. Take a look at the oxygen gauge on the panel, quickly. Where's the needle? The needle? I... It's on the red side. Kent, the air is foul. What? No oxygen. Call Maddox. We're trapped. Kent, I... I... Scott, he's collapsed. I'd better turn him over and loosen his collar. There now. Professor? Professor Thorpe? Professor, don't you hear me? Oh, good heavens, he's unconscious. Oh, this air... Must have gotten him. I'll have to call Maddox and tell him to bring the diving bell to the surface. Hello? Hello, Captain Maddox. Clark Kent calling. Funny, there's no answer. Hello? Captain Maddox? Captain Maddox? Strange, I don't hear any sound at all through this tube. I've got to reach him. I've got to get Thorpe up to the surface before this foul air kills him. It's even bothering me. Maddox? Captain Maddox? Hello? 
Hello. Hello, Captain Maddox. Hello, hello. Oh, it's no use. Speaking tube is out of order, too. Ah, this is a job for Superman. Got to get Thorpe out of here. No time to lose. But if I smash through the side of the bathysphere, I'll ruin it and doom Gleason, the diver. But if I don't, we'll all die here. Even Superman can't live without air. Wait. Hold on. The safety chamber. If I can manage to get out through it and close the doors without letting the ocean in, I might be able to find the break in that airline. Here we are. The safety chamber. One more huge door between me and the sea. Oh, wait a moment. Thorpe said something about compressed air emptying the safety chamber and closing the outer door. I better get that first so the professor will be protected. There. Now to close the inner door. And open the outer one. I hope that compressed air holds out long enough to keep the safety chamber free from water until I return. Ah, it works. Now, out we go into the water and close the door. Really? That door is sealed shut. The water pressure down here is terrific. I've got to work fast. Find out what's wrong with the airline and speaking to you. Great Scott, what's that? An octopus. A huge octopus with its tentacles wrapped around our connections to the surface. So that's what's causing the trouble. Well, I'll soon settle him. Up, up, up. Come on. Unwrap yourself from those lines. Suction cups are mighty powerful. Guess I'll have to pull his tentacles off. Here goes. There, he's giving. A bit more and I'll have those lines free. Now then. Ah, broke him loose. Oh, fast his other tentacles around me. Trying to crush me, eh? Ah, he's giving, all right. Now, one last punch, all my strength. Ah, hit him square in the middle. Finished him. Now, back to the bathosphere and Professor Thorpe. Down, down. Here I am. Are you all right, Professor? My throat feels like flame paper. What happened? I guess the air supply failed and you passed out. I began to feel pretty weak myself. <laughs> what happened? Uh, what failed you? Well, I don't know. The airline must have become twisted. A few minutes later, it worked free again. Thank heavens, sir. Just in the nick of time, I say. Yes. Professor, that noise. It's Gleason. Back from the gold ship. Oh. I'll let him in. All right. He comes to the outer door and into the safety chamber. We let the air force the water out of the chamber. And then we'll open the stone. Now, Professor? No. No, give the air another moment. All right, then. Gleason, what's the box you're carrying? He can't hear you with that diving helmet on his head, Ken. Oh, yes, I forgot. Take that box away from him. Can help me get his diving helmet off. Okay. Well, Jason? Well, that sure feels better. Greetings, folks. For heaven's sake, Jason. What did you find? Yes, what's in that box? One question at a time. First you, Professor. I found the gold ship. Just where you said it would be. You did? What about the gold? Open that box. The box? Just a second, Professor. I'm opening it. Great Scott. Gold. Penny's doubloon. The gold of the treasure ship. Hundreds of them. And that's only a small part of it, Professor. I left about ten more of those boxes back in the ship. I couldn't carry them. Kent. Gleason. I've succeeded. Oh, you don't know what this means to me. It's not the gold itself. I know, Professor. Now you can build your Institute of Science. Yes, Kent. A nice dream come true. 
I can hardly believe it. Oh, you'd believe it, all right. If you saw the boxes piled up inside the hull of that old ship. Mason, how long will it take you to transfer all the boxes to the battle scale? Oh, about an hour, I guess. Well, hurry. Let's get to work. Bring them here. Okay. Hello. Hello, Professor Thorpe. That's Captain Maddox calling us. I'll take it, Kent. All right. Hello, Captain Maddox. Thorpe speaking. Professor, I've been trying to reach you for a few minutes, but you didn't answer. The sky is badly overcast up here. Looks like a storm gathering. Now, don't worry about that, Captain. I've great news for you. You found the treasure ship? And the gold, too. Boxes full of it. Please, and just brought it in. Oh, that's wonderful, sir, wonderful. But you better come on up. Come up? What for? I've already told you. There's a storm brewing. The barometer is falling, and it looks like we're in for a blow. Oh, I'm sorry, Captain, but we must stay down here. Only an hour more. Professor, you're taking your life in your hands. Oh, nonsense, Captain, nonsense. Professor Thorpe, listen to me. Hold on a moment, Captain. What is it, Kent? I heard what the Captain said about the storm. He's right, Professor. Oh, you too, Kent. Uh, what do you think, Leeson, you should know about these things? Well, it might be dangerous if it blows, but I'm not afraid. Anything you say, Professor? I say continue to work. Get out the gold while the getting is good. Oh, Professor Thorpe, don't let the gold make you foolhardy. Captain Maddox knows what he's talking about. Even Gleason admits it's dangerous. But Kent... Gleason's the man who will take most of the risk. He might be separated from the bathysphere during the storm. You have no right to gamble with a man's life, not even for a few minutes. Well, well, perhaps you're right, Kent. Perhaps the sight of this gold has got the better of me. Then you will go up to the surface? Yes, Kent. I'll have a look at the barometer. See... See just how close that storm actually is. Hello? Hello, Captain Maddox? Yes, sir. Bring the bath that's here to the surface. Aye, aye, sir. Well, here we go now. Ken, how far down is the bath that's The cable meter reads 50 fathoms, Captain. Been that way for several minutes. Uh, that means they're at the bottom. I told them not to get down again. I warned them. You worried about the storm, Captain? Yes, I am. It's coming, Kent, and it looks bad. Well, we did our best to stop them. Nothing could hold the professor back after he saw the barometer had only dropped two points. Yes, but it's dropped ten more in the last few minutes. Captain, that, that thunder and those clouds overhead. Yeah, the storm is about to break. Call Professor Thorpe. Get the bathysphere up here immediately. Where are you going? Got to batten down the hatches. Stand by the anchors. All hands on deck. All hands on deck. Stand ready for water. Right, 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 right. Hello. Hello, Professor Thorpe. Yes, sir. The storm broke, sir. You'd better come up quickly. Oh, yes. Mountainous waves. Call me back as soon as Gleason returns to the bathysphere. But don't waste a moment. What's the matter with them, Captain? Wind's too strong. They're slipping. This is a hurricane. We're being driven through the rocks. Oh, what do we do? Oh, one side, Captain. We've got to work fast. Mr. Conroy, I want full steam up. Give her every ounce of bank. We're going to get headway. Aye, aye, sir. You men, take out a sea anchor. All right, move fast. Look at the log down there. He's up on that starboard halter. Far to me, sir. They're out. Out of port. Come on, get that wheel over. Out of If we can only get her nose up into the wind, we may be able to hold her steady. You think you can do it, Captain? No, it's one chance in a million, Kent. This looks like it's going to be the worst war I've seen in all my 30 years of training. Captain, Captain, Captain Maddox. What is it, Conroy? No use, sir. We're not making a foot of headway against this gale. Keep on trying. Hold that wheel over. The sea anchor should help. Captain Maddox, yeah? the sea anchor. Well, what's wrong with it? It's gone. The line snapped. Kent has ripped it to shreds. Oh, oh, I was afraid of that. Well, isn't there anything else we can do, Captain? Kent, I'm afraid we're licked. What? What about Thorpe and Gleason? The batons will be dragged along the bottom. They'll be killed. Can't help it, Kent. There's nothing we can do. What? She won't hold in this sea. What's the bathysphere? We can try to bring it up. No, no, don't touch it. They'll snap the airline and they'll suffocate. You mean to say you're going to stand by and let them die like trapped rats? Kent, all we can do is hope for the best. The anchors may catch and hold before we hit the rocks. Either that, or we're all doomed. <laughs> Bar, Professor. Gleason, how, how long do these tropical storms last? I can't stand much more of this. Might be ten minutes. Might be an hour. An hour? 
Oh, good heavens. How strong is the atmosphere, Professor? Can you take this banging around? Uh, I don't know. <laughs> Three inches of steel plates. But this battering may lose the seam. If it doesn't stop soon. Yeah. There's nothing we can do but hang on. We've got to get up to the surface. But, Professor, it's impossible in this storm. <laughs> We've got to. I'm frightened, Gleason. Oh, no. Take it easy, sir. We'll come out of it okay. But how? The bathroom here can't stand much more than this pounding. It wasn't built for this kind of treatment. I'm going to call Captain Maddox. Hello. Hello, I'm Dex Juanita. Maddox, you've got to bring us up to the surface immediately. Well, Professor, we can't do that now. The storm's getting worse. It's suicide to even attempt it. You're better off down there, sir. We won't make it... Oh, no, they... I command I'm you. I'm sorry, sir. I must use my own judgment. I can't afford to risk your life and the lives of my crew. But, Maddox, listen to me. Hello. Hello. He's at the speaking tube. I think the captain's right, Professor. We are better off down here, even if we are getting bounced around. We'll just have to take our chances. And meanwhile, on shore, another danger threatens the storm-tossed Juanita. Seeking protection from the hurricane's fury in the lee of a huge mass of rock is the villainous Pete Escobar. With him is Carlos, his evil assistant. Escobar looks quickly across the bay through his binoculars, then speaks. Carlos, Carlos, look out there in the bay. Fort ship, Juanita. Yeah. I can't see nothing. There's wind and those great waves there. Use the binoculars. Look there. Here is sharp two drags. Mm. Oh, yes, I see her now, Escobar. She's being driven like a straw before these winds. Yes. Must have slipped a rank, Carlos. And this storm is driving us straight for the rock. But from me... See how these hurricane blows her. Like the cork on the wind. Ah, that is good. She will be smashed to pieces. We will wipe out any survivors of the crew. And the gold will be ours. Two million dollars in gold, Carlos. Yes, the gold. See, si. it's all in Professor Thorpe's body sphere, which went down to the bottom before the storm began. Then they will have the treasure. Yes, but not for long, hmm. Carlos. What do you mean? The Juanita will shortly go on the rocks. Yes. When the hurricane passes, we wipe out the survivors and salvage the battlefield full of gold. But Escobar, for... but Escobar, will not this battlefield be lost? No. The battlefield cables are still attached to the ship. Captain Maddox won't cut the battlefield loose because Professor Thorpe and his diver are inside. But Escobar, suppose you want it, uh, she does not go on the rocks. <laughs> There is your rancher, Carlos. The storm grows worse. It will not fail us. But if it does, I have another plan. You will see. Captain? Hey, Captain Maddox, where are you? Hey, turn at the wheel. Say... This is awful, Captain. How are we doing? Oh, badly, Ken. Badly. Worst storm I've ever encountered. Oh. Quick, grab the hand of Ken. You'll be washed overboard. I got it. Oh, say, I've never seen such waves before. Oh. Uh, nor have I in all my years at sea. Just a hundred mile an hour wind. Great guns. What do we do? Uh, it doesn't seem much that we can do, Kent. Except keep trying and hoping. Well, Captain Maddox, you don't think that... The will crash? I don't know, Kent. Unless the storm lets up soon, anything can happen. If I could only get our anchors to bite into the bottom. Well, why don't they grab hold? Oh, there's not much chance. This wind and these mountainous waves don't give our hooks a chance to sink into the sand bottom. Speaking of the bottom, what are we going to do about Professor Thorpe and Gleason down in the bathosphere? Have you heard from them? Well, yes, a few minutes ago. They're being dragged and bounced on the bottom. Well... I hope the bathosphere is strong enough to withstand the putt taking now. Why in heaven's name don't we bring them up to the surface? Oh, can't it be suicide to even try it? Besides, the weight of the diving bell serves as a drag anchor for the ship. It might help us ride this out. But Maddox, if we do capsize or pile up on the rocks, they'll be caught down there. Caught like rats in a trap. Oh, oh, oh 
by that great horn bull camp. Look to the starboard. Rocks. A whole row of them. A shark's tooth reach. Evilest rocks in the seven seas were driving straight at them. Good heavens, what do we do? The wheel, Kent. You'll be swinging. All right, come on, let's go. Uh, oh, it fucks like the devil himself put down with the rudder. Oh, the Kent, it's uh, our only chance. I'm trying. Old waves are smashing the rudder about. Uh, are we Are we veering away from the reefs, Captain? No. Uh, I'm afraid not, Kent. The wind's too strong. Forcing us on the rocks in spite of the rudder. Where are you going? I'm going to see if I can lend a hand to the crew. I'll be back soon. Nothing the crew can do to save the one eaten in this hurricane. This is a job for Superman. Now then, how far are we from those rocks? Uh, about 50 yards. Well, that's enough. Over the side we go. Up, up, and away. Faster, faster. Not a moment to lose. There must be some way I can hold the one eater off those rocks. Ah, I have it. Yes. I'll brace myself against the rocks. As the ship comes in, I'll catch her, hold her off long enough for the anchor to take hold. Down, down. Ah, now then, here she comes, bearing down on me like a locomotive. Ready? Now. Ah, caught her. Now, I'll have to hold her steady for a while. Hold it. Steel muscles braced like giant girders, Superman holds the ship and its human cargo against the fury of the hurricane. Holds it until it is firmly anchored. Then, as the storm dies down, he flies back aboard the Juanita, unnoticed in the excitement. Kent, Kent, where did you disappear to? Well, I, I'm ashamed to say it, Captain. I got seasick during the height of the storm and went down to my cabin. Oh. <laughs> Just seasick. Yes. Well, thank heaven you're all right. I was afraid you'd been washed overboard by those waves. Oh, I'm all right. Say, what happened, Captain? Things looked very bad just before I went below. Well, we were just about to pile into the shark tooth reefs back there, Kent. I still don't understand how we avoided them. What did happen, Captain? I can't explain it. There we were, driving straight for those rocks, and suddenly, when everything seemed lost, the ship stopped. What? Stopped as though giant hands had reached out and saved us. It was a miracle. It does sound like a miracle. Couldn't that have been a cross current, some powerful tide operating at the reef? Or couldn't the hooks just happen to catch? Yes, that's possible, but not likely. But say, why are we standing around? We've clean forgotten about Professor Thorpe and Gleason down there in the bathosphere. Good heavens, you haven't heard from them? Not a word. Oh, I'll call them right now. They must be badly shaken up. Hello? Hello down there in the bathosphere. Hello, Professor Thorpe. No answer, Kent? No. I'll try again. Hello, Thorpe. Gleason. Hello down there. Well, Kent? Still no answer. Captain Maddox, something must be wrong. The oxygen pump. Come on, we'll have a look at the gauge. All right. Well, the pump's still working. Yes, but the pressure, Captain. Captain, look at that gauge. Pressure zero. Yes. Great Scott, Kent. Look in the water. Air bubbles. That means the airline is disconnected, Captain. We've got to bring the bathosphere up out of the water quickly. Hurry, Kent. Start that motor winch. Okay. How quickly can this winch raise the bathosphere? About 100 feet a minute, Kent. We don't know how long Thorpe and Gleason have been without air. The airline must have been broken during the storm. There's still a chance. The bathosphere's reserve tank has enough to last for about 15 minutes. Oh, can't we speed that motor? Captain Maddox, huh? doesn't that cable seem a trifle slack to you? Slack? How do you mean? Well, it's coming up so easily. Almost as though no weight were attached to it. Oh, but that's impossible, Kent. The bathosphere weighs tons of... Hold on. Stop that motor. Why? If you're right, Kent, this is worse than we suspected. Stop that motor. I want to test the cable. Okay. What is it, Captain? What happened? Oh. Kent, I... I hate to say this. What is it? There's nothing at the end of this cable. The bathosphere is gone. Bathosphere gone? Yes. Cut loose. Professor Thorpe and Gleason. Cut the donkey engine, Kent. It's no use. What do you mean, Captain Maddox? Cut that engine. Don't you understand, Kent? The bathosphere's broken loose from its cables. It's lost. Somewhere on the bottom of Octopus Bay. But, Captain, it, it can't be. Professor Thorpe and Gleason, the diver, are inside the bathosphere. I know, Kent, and there's nothing on God's earth we can do for them. That hurricane must have snapped the steel cables like they were cotton threads. Captain, maybe you're wrong. Why don't we keep the donkey engine running, bring the cables up, even if there's only a slim chance? There isn't even a slim chance, Kent. All right, go ahead, start it up. See? See how slack the cables are. 
If the bath of spear was attached to them, they'd be as taut as drumheads. Oh, no, Kent, she's gone forever. But isn't there anything we can do? Use grappling irons or send down a diver. Grappling irons won't work in 300 feet of water. And we haven't a spare diving suit on board. There, uh, look. The end of the cables. Stop the engine. Oh, you were right, Captain. Both cables snapped off, and the air hose with them. I guess that means even if we could raise the bathosphere, Thorpe and Gleason would be dead from suffocation. Wait. Maybe not. We've got a reserve tank of oxygen down there. It's good for at least 15 minutes. You mean they'll have good air for 15 minutes? Yes. Yeah. Oh, yes, but what good will it do them? Even if it could last for 15 hours, it wouldn't... Ken, where are you going? Down to my cabin. This thing has me all broken up. Oh. I understand, kid. Try and get some rest. I'll try. Getting some rest is the last thing on my mind now. Fifteen minutes. There may still be that slim chance I was talking about. Maddox can't see me now, so Superman can take over. If I can only find the bathosphere, I can bring it to the surface. But the problem will be finding it in all that water. No telling how far it's drifted since it broke loose. Well, no sense debating about it. Every minute now may mean the difference between life and death. Up on the rail. Now, down into the water. Down! Leaving the surface of Octopus Bay like the steel sharp blade of a knife, Superman swims far down into the murky depths searching for the diving bell that has suddenly changed from a haven of safety into a trap of death. And meanwhile, in the bathosphere itself, Professor Thorpe and Gleason watch the minutes slip by, awaiting the end they know is not far off. Listen. Listen. Try, try the phone once more. Once more, Gleason. That's no use, Professor Thorpe. Everything's cut cable, Daryl, and phone. Try it. Try it's it. It's a waste of breath, and we need that breath, every bit of it. Please, I say. All right. Hello, Juanita. Hello, Juanita. Captain Maddox. Captain Maddox. Oh, it's dead. Wine's dead. That means we haven't a chance, Gleason. Not a chance. Oh, why didn't I listen to Maddox? He warned me not to come down again. Oh, don't talk, Professor. It uses up oxygen and there isn't much left. What's the difference? Gleason, you did find the Spanish gold ship, didn't you? Yes. And you brought the gold back to the balance here. Two million dollars worth of it. Yes, I brought it back. Where is it, Gleason? I want to look at it. Spare in those boxes. Two million dollars worth of gold. Enough to build an institute of science that would stand forever as a monument to mankind. But that'll never come to pass now. Never, never. Please don't talk, Professor. We haven't much oxygen left. You think they're searching for us? Wouldn't do them much good. Gleason, listen. Well, what is it, Professor? Listen, I'm not going to let myself be trapped down here. I want a fighting chance to live. Professor, what are you doing? Pushing the water out of the safety chamber. Give me your diving suit. Professor Thorpe, you're mad. You can't leave the bathosphere. You wouldn't last a minute under that water pressure without any oxygen. You heard what I said. Give me that diving suit. No, I won't. It's suicide. All right, then. I'll open the safety doors and let the sea pour in. I can't stand this any longer. Oh, don't, Professor. Stand back. I've got a revolver, and I'll use it if you make an attempt to stop me. Professor. I'm not going to die a slow, torturous death. If it must come, I want it to come quickly. So here goes. Stop, stop. I hear tapping. You're lying, Gleason. No, I swear it. Close the steel door and listen. There. Do you hear it? Yes. Yes, I think I do. What is it? I don't know. Oh, it's probably just a fish or an octopus. No, oh, no, it's too heavy. Professor, we're moving. Bathosphere is going up. No, that's impossible. It's true. Look at the pressure gauge. It's falling. You're right. We are going up. You bet we, we are. are. Jason, it's a miracle. A miracle. Six bells. No sense standing here at the rail watching the water. That diving bell's gone for good. Conway. Aye, sir. Radio to Coast Guard at Key West reporting its loss. Then weigh anchor. Aye, sir. Wait. Conroy. Yes, sir. Something's breaking water off there amidships. What is it? I can't tell, sir. Conroy. Look, it's the bathosphere. All hands on deck. All hands on deck. Quickly! Get a steel cable! Drop that small boat! Get a line of the water! Hurry, men! Hurry before she sinks again! 
Some men carry Professor Thorpe and Gleason to the cabin. Go oh, away. We're all right, Maddox. Just need some fresh air. What happened to us? The storm snapped the bathysphere cables. They're giving you up for lost. I, I was just about to weigh anchor and, and head back when the bell shot up above the surface. Professor Thorpe, Gleason, you've been saved. How did it happen? I, I don't know, Kent. Gleason can tell you better than I. I don't know much either. We were down there for what seemed like hours. The oxygen was almost gone, and suddenly we heard a faint tapping. Tapping? From outside the bathysphere? I guess so. Next thing we knew, we were slowly floating upward. And here we are. Well, we've had some miracles on this trip, but this tops them all. And Kent, we have the gold. What? All of it. Say, that's great. Oh, I think what we all need most is a good night's sleep. We lived everything just as it is until morning. Oh, yes, but what about the gold, Professor? It won't all fit into the ship's safe. Well, I'll leave it in the bath. It's here until morning. Go on, Kent. Oh, please, sir. Take my arm. Tell you what we needed. But even as peace and quiet settle over the ship, riding at anchor 50 yards off the rocky shore, Pete Escobar and his henchman Carlos, who have followed the ship to Octopus Bay, push off in a rowboat with muffled oars, slip silently over the now calm surface of the bay in the direction of the Juanita. Quiet, Carlos. You must not hear us. This time we cannot fail. It still puzzles me, Escobar, how they escaped the storm. What difference does it make? This way is easier. We know they have the gold on board. Through the binoculars, we saw them bring up Thorpe's diving bell. The gold is still in it, waiting for us. Uh, it will be good to touch it with my hands. Very good. Soon, Carlos, soon. Now, easy. Come close. Swing around so I can grab that line hanging over them. That's enough. I have it. Now, those sacks. Take them and we'll climb aboard. Hey, suppose there is someone on watch. You have your knife? See? Si. And you will use it. Come on. Can't you climb this rope without kicking the side of the ship? Now then. Keep low, Carlos. And follow me. Go ahead. Now, see? Si. There is the diving bell. Then it is the gold. You stay here outside. I will hand it out to you. Put it into the sacks. Yes, Baba. Make no sound. Come on. Pronto. Here we are. Even the door to the bathysphere is open. Prepare the sacks, Carlos. And keep watch if anyone comes. See? I will go in after the gold. Show it, Escobar. Someone is come. Get down. See? It's Maddox, captain of the Juanita. Uh, there is someone reaching. Professor Thor. Escobar. They are coming towards us. Keep that knife ready. Incidentally, you haven't seen the Spanish gold, have you? No, sir, I haven't. Well, come over here. I'll show it to you. Oh, fine, Professor. Fine. Get ready, Carlos. Get ready. I've forgotten completely that you haven't seen the gold we brought from that sunken Spanish ship, Captain Maddox. In the excitement, it just slipped my mind. Well, that didn't bother me, Professor. All I was interested in was getting you and the diving bell up from the bottom after that hurricane hit us. Well, you see the gold now. Two million dollars worth of Spanish doubloons. A king's ransom, Maddox. Enough to make my dream of building a scientific institute dedicated to the betterment of mankind become a reality. Well, we've certainly gone through enough to get it, sir. And the sooner we carry it back to America, the better I'll like it. I've had the feeling all along that we haven't heard the last of that half-breed Escobar. Pete Escobar? Yes. Oh, oh, he won't bother us again. Remember, we left him floundering around in the harbor back at Manau. Yes, I remember, but... Wait a minute. Did you hear that peculiar noise? No. No, I don't hear a thing. Except the creaking of the boat. Like something banging up against the ship's port side? 
Here? No. Listen, uh, it sounds like a rowboat moored to our boarding ladder. Now take a look. Oh, don't bother with that now, Maddox. I want to show you the gold. Yes, but if it's either of our small boats, Professor, it shouldn't be there. Well, if it isn't one of ours... Well, then... you can investigate later, Maddox. Let me show you the treasure, and then I'll go below again and try to get some sleep. All right. Have your flashlight? Yeah, it's right here. All right, snap it on. Now, Carlos. Let go, Professor. Let down, both of them. Good work, Carlos. Now, quickly, the gold in the bottom sphere into the sack. Someone else may come. Yes, Father. Uh, these boxes have much gold in them, eh? Five, six, seven, eight, only two more. Here they are. Now you take one sack and I take the other. Quickly. Get down into the rowboat, Carlos. I will owe the sacks to you. Hey, see. Hey. Yeah. I am ready as a box. Uh, Diabla, there, here we are. Uh, you have that one? Uh, here is the other. I have it. Now hold the rowboat steady while I come down. Take the oars, Carlos. Row as you have never rowed before. Hey, Carlos. Two million dollars worth of it. Two million. It's just a shoulder wound and not very serious, Professor Thorpe. I'll wash it out and bandage it up. Uh, let me have that warm water, sir. How is Maddox? Was he hurt badly? Yes, I'm afraid so. He's still unconscious. I took the liberty of ordering the Juanita to sail from Manao Harbor at once. Captain Maddox needs medical attention. You did the right thing, Kent. There we are. Oh. Now, the wound is washed out. Now I'll bandage it up for you. Kent, is all the gold gone? All of it, Professor. I still don't understand why you didn't shout for help. I was only dozing in my cabin. There wasn't time. Just as Maddox flashed his light, Escobar leaped up from behind the diving bell, followed by another man, and they both had knives. You're sure it was Escobar? Positive. I saw his face clearly, just before he stabbed me. But how did they get on board? Probably in the rowboat Maddox had banging against the ship's side. He wanted to investigate, but I restrained him. If he had found the rowboat, it never would have happened. I have only myself to blame. Oh, come now, Professor. That's no way to look no, at it. true, Kent. Not only have I lost the gold, but you say Maddox is seriously injured. He may die. If he does... His blood will be on my hands. Tell the first mate to pile the steam on. To push the one either as fast as she'll go. Okay, Professor. We've got to get Maddox to a doctor before it's too late. Before it's too late. With the captain's life hanging by a thread, the staunch little ship plows across the vastness of the Caribbean Sea, heading for the nearest port, Manao Harbor. In the meantime, back in the offices of the Daily Planet, editor Perry White, worried at not having heard from Kent and unable to reach the Juanita by radio, has assigned another reporter, Bill Wentworth, to locate the missing boat. Overhearing editor White's instructions to Wentworth, Jimmy Olsen, young Daily Planet copy boy and staunch admirer of Clark Kent, stows away aboard the plane Bill Wentworth charters for the trip. We find them now in the room of a small hotel in Manao Harbor. Operator. Operator. Have you put through my call to Mr. Perry White at the Daily Planet? Please, Mr. Wentworth, don't tell Mr. White. I, I didn't mean anything by uh, it. Not much you didn't. Sneaking on board the plane and not showing yourself until we landed in Manao Harbor. A very pretty trick. Uh, all right, maybe it was a trick, but I had to do what I had to, Mr. Wentworth. When I heard Mr. White tell you Clark Kent was missing, I, I couldn't stay behind. Clark's a friend of mine. And I, I give up my life for him. All right. <laughs> Operator. Operator, cancel that call. Now stop bawling like a baby, White. Jimmy. I won't call Mr. White. Gee, Mr. Wentworth, you're swell. No, I'm just a soft-hearted fool. If I wasn't, I'd ship you back home on the first boat. However, I'm going to let you stay until we locate Kent and Professor Thorpe. On one condition. I'll do anything, anything you say. All right. Now, this is the condition. You are never to leave my sight no matter what happens. Is that clear? Absolutely, Mr. Wentworth. And don't call me Mr. Wentworth. My name is Bill. Okay, Bill. What do we do first? Well, I got some information from the chief of the harbor police. The Juanita left here for an undisclosed destination three days ago and hasn't been heard from since. Oh, well, three days isn't such a long time, well, is it? Well, not ordinarily. There was a hurricane out at sea yesterday. Oh. Well, the Juanita is only a small boat, you know. Well, I think the best thing we can do is charter another boat and go out looking for her. Yeah. Well, finding her is a hundred-to-one chance, but it's worth a try. Uh, Mr. Wentworth. Huh? Uh, I mean, Bill, there's something I don't quite understand. 
Why did Clark Kent go on this trip with that professor? Well, according to the story in the papers, Thorpe planned to study deep-sea forms of marine life in his new bathosphere, a uh, diving bell. That's what I thought, but isn't it true? No, it isn't. Thorpe was searching for a treasure in Spanish gold, a $2 million treasure at the bottom of the sea. No wonder it was such a secret. Well, that's what worried Perry White, Jimmy. He had an idea someone else was in on the secret. Well, let's not waste any time. The quicker we get a boat, the quicker we can get on the way. Come on. This looks like the place, Bill. Didn't that man say the Paradise Cafe? Yes. And he said we could hire a boat from a man named Pete Escobar. Now, maybe you'd better wait outside, Jimmy. This joint looks tough. But you made me promise never to be out of your sight. Okay, kid, you win. Come on. We'll ask the bartender. Okay. Can you tell me where I can find uh, Pete Escobar? Come on. I, I'm looking for Pete Escobar. I, I want to hire a boat, and I understand he owns one. In the back room, you find Escobar. Well, thanks. Follow me, Jimmy. Right behind you, Bill. I can't say I like the looks of the cutthroats hanging around this dive. You stick close to me. I will. Here's the door. Uh, Mr. Escobar? Who told you to come in here? Oh, the bartender. I, I want to hire a boat. The man down at the dock said you had one for hire. Who are you? Well, my name is Wentworth, and this is my friend Jimmy Olson. Oh. Now, come on in, Jimmy. Okay. Close the door. I don't hire my boat anymore. What you want it for? Fishing? No. Uh, we just thought we'd take a little cruise for a few days. Well, then look for a ship called the Juanita. A friend of ours is on it. And we're Jimmy. Like... Oh. So you're looking for the Juanita, huh? You uh, have a friend on the Juanita. Oh, boy, just fooling. We don't care about the Juanita. We, we just want to take a cruise. I see. You just want to take a cruise. It's uh, too bad my boat is not for hire. Oh, yes. Uh, we're sorry. Well, thanks just the same. Come on, Jimmy. Oh, wait, I'm tying my shoe. Mary, it's tied. Come on. Okay. Uh, goodbye, Mr. Escobar. Adios. Hurry. Hurry, Jimmy. The quicker we get out of here, the better. You bet. Follow me to the street. Okay. Walk past, Jimmy. Right back to the hotel. I've got something to tell you. It's important. And I've got plenty to tell you, young man. You never should have mentioned the Juanita. Suppose Professor Thorpe has already found the gold and is headed back here. We don't want any of these natives hanging around the ship. If Professor Thorpe did find the gold, then he hasn't got it now. What do you mean, Jimmy? You stop under the streetlight. Remember when I said I was tying my shoe? Yes. Well, I wasn't at all. I was picking something up from under the table Escobar was sitting at. What was it? I got it right here in my hand. Look. Good heavens. It's a gold doubloon. Dated 1784. That's right. An old Spanish gold piece. Jimmy, I think you've stumbled onto something. Yes, sir. Escobar must have the treasure Professor Thorpe was after. No wonder he looked so funny at us when you mentioned the Juanita. You think he's trying to make trouble for us, Bill? Uh, Jimmy, it's hard to... Wait. Look. Those two men who just came out of the cafe. Yes, sir. They act like they're looking for somebody. Jimmy. They're looking for us. Oh, they see us, Bill. They're coming after us. You're right, Jimmy. Come on. Run. Right. Run. The first mate says we'll be picking up the Manawa Lighthouse within the hour, Professor. Well, the sooner the better, Ken. How's Captain Maddox? I'm still unconscious. That stab wound he got when Pete Escobar and his henchmen came on board the Juanita was pretty deep. The wound in your shoulder seems to be healing up pretty well. Yes, I'm all right. But I'm worried about Maddox. Unless we reach Manawa soon, it may be too late. We're going as fast as we can, Professor. Incidentally, I never did really understand what happened last night. Well, you remember that after the bathosphere shot to the surface with Gleason, myself, and the gold treasure inside it, you, Captain Maddox, and the crew hoisted on board. Yes. And then you suggested that everyone turn in. I recall the gold was left right in the bathosphere. Yes, that's right. Well, along about midnight, unable to sleep, I came up on deck and found Captain Maddox. Uh huh. We chatted a few minutes, and then I offered to show him the Spanish gold. As we drew near the bathosphere, Escobar and his partner jumped out from behind the diving bell and attacked us with knives. And that's all I remember. I'm sorry I wasn't there with you, Professor. Uh, what good would that have done? Two men with knives were a match for a dozen who were unarmed. Well, you can't tell. I might have been able to hold them off. Well, there's no sense in discussing it now. It's all over. The gold is gone. Maddox lies at death's door. I've been a failure, Kent. 
A horrible failure. Oh, it wasn't your fault, Professor. I'm afraid it was, Kent. I should have dealt severely with Escobar and his gang when they first attacked us in Manao Harbor and tried to steal the bathosphere. I shouldn't have let them escape. Well, we all make mistakes. I know, but this escape it was a costly one. Two million dollars in gold. And possibly a man's life. I have nothing more to live for, Kent. But my dream of building a scientific institute that would work for the betterment of mankind shattered into a million fragments. All I am is a, an old, useless man. Oh, that's not true, Professor Thorpe. I'm afraid it is. This is my last chance to achieve success. And I missed it. Oh, maybe you haven't. Oh, it's time for me to go down and look at Captain Maddox. I'll go with you. All right. Kent, do you, do you think there's any hope for him? I don't know. He's lost a lot of blood, but if we can get him to a doctor... Is there one in Manao? Yes. Oh, here's his cabin. Kent, look at him in his face. He's as pale as a ghost. What's happened? His pulse is very weak. Seems to be slipping fast. Oh, Kent, what what can we do? Uh, we're an hour from the lighthouse. How far from the harbor? Two hours at least. Uh, Professor, you'd better go up on deck. I'll take care of Captain Maddox. But how? How? Never mind. Just go up on deck. You're looking pale yourself. Go on. All right, but I don't I don't know what you think you can do. Well, you just leave it to me. Yeah, now that he's gone, I'll see what I can do. Not as Clark Kent, but as Superman. Two hours to Manao Harbor. Poor Maddox to never last that long. It's a matter of minutes now. Somehow I've got to get off this ship with him and not be seen. Be taking a desperate chance in broad daylight, but life and death hang in the balance. Well, here goes. Up with him gently. Ah, there we are. Now to reach the starboard deck without being spotted by one of the crew. Easy. Easy. So far, so good. Only a few more steps to go. Ah, here's the deck. A split second to reach the rail and, and then off. Oh, no, wait. Someone's coming. A sailor. Oh, it was a little too close for comfort. I'll wait until he gets behind the deck house and then the coast will be clear. Now. Up. Up. And away. Red cloak streaming in the wind, Superman wings like a giant bird for the distant town of Manau. While the shadow of death hovers above him, threatening at any moment to steal the last breath of life from the unconscious body of Captain Maddox. In the meantime, a man and boy race wildly through Manau's narrow streets and finally stumble exhausted into their room at the waterfront hotel. Hey, slam the door, Jimmy. Lock it. But I will. I thought you were going to get us to... We're not done with them yet. Here, pile those chairs up against the door. Right. You think they'll try to break in? I wouldn't put anything past those half-breeds. Here, help me with this table. Okay. It's all my fault, isn't it? If I hadn't mentioned the one eight, everything would have been all right. Oh, forget it. What's done is done. Shh. Listen. Someone's coming up the stairs. Don't move. They're trying to get in. Open the door, Americano. Don't answer. Open, Americano. Jimmy. Yeah? Slip over to the window quietly. That's fine. Now help me raise it. All right. Gently. Take it easy. Uh, that's it. That's the stuff. Oh, let him bang. That won't get him anywhere. Let's see whether we can climb out and down to the street. Send them climb down on. No drain pipe. Oh, Nothing. I'm afraid you're right. Oh. We'll just have to sit here and wait. I give my right arm for a gun. We make plenty trouble, Americano. Yeah, let him talk. Words can't hurt us. Well, I guess you're sorry now you stowed away on that plane, eh, Jimmy? Oh, no, I'm not. I like excitement. But when Clark Kent and I were up my aunt's place, he... Wait a minute. They're going down the stairs. You think they've given up? Uh, not if I know half-breeds. We'd better close the window and draw the shade. Okay. What do you think they're going to do, Bill? There's no teller. By the way, have you still got that gold coin you picked up at the cafe? Oh, yeah. Here it is. Dated 1784. Yes, there's no question about it, Jimmy. This is one of the doubloons from the sunken treasure Professor Thorpe was after. Then Escobar has got the treasure. Well, it looks that way. But how did he get he it? probably stole it off the Juanita. Jimmy? Yeah? If anyone knows the fate of that ship and the people on board her, it's that greasy half-breed. And we've got to do our level best to get out of here and worm the truth out of him. What's that? Uh, a stone hurled through the windowpane. Uh, here it is on the floor. Look, there's a message tied around it. Yeah, and it's written in Spanish. Maybe I can translate it. Let's see... This is a last warning. Unless 
you give up, it will death your beast. Oh, no, that's not quite right. Unless, unless you give up, death will be your end. Oh, well, it means the same thing. Do you think they mean it? Well, I wouldn't be a bit surprised. If Escobar has done anything to Kent or Professor Thorpe, he's got to get rid of us. Because he knows that sooner or later we'll track him down. That's all my fault. I told him we were looking for the oh, one. Oh, don't be silly. Now, now, listen to me. Yeah? In case anything happens, anything serious, get to a telephone as fast as you can and call Mr. White. But if anything happens, it'll happen to me, too. Oh, no, they won't bother you. You're just a kid. Now, remember, get to a phone in a hurry. Call Mr. White and tell him everything. If necessary, he'll suit to see to it that an American battleship loaded with Marines is sent down here. Another message, Bill. Yeah. Here. Here. Yeah. Well, this one is short and sweet. You have one minute to give up. Well, that's generous of them. Jimmy. Huh? I forgot the telephone. Operator. Operator. You can call the police, Bill. Operator. Operator. Uh, no, they're not that dumb. The wires have been cut. Oh, uh, for a moment, I thought that there was a way out. How much of our minute is left? Uh, 30 seconds on my watch. Well, a lot can happen in 30 seconds. Anyway, I, I think it's just a bluff. Y- you do, really? Oh, of course. After all, it's broad daylight. They don't dare pull anything. <laughs> Something's choking my throat up. Hey, smell it, Bill? Smoke. Bill, you don't think oh, that they'll... take it easy, kid. Take it easy. Don't lose your head. It's smoke, all right. But where's it coming from? Look, there's a crack in the floor over in the corner. Yeah, you're right. The floor's getting hot. That means they've done it, the rats. You mean set the place on fire? Yeah, that's what it looks like. Or, or, or maybe it's just a smoke bomber of a smudge to scare us out. <laughs> well, we'll wait and see. It's getting worse, Bill. Yeah, stay close to the floor. Put a handkerchief over your mouth. <laughs> if it's just smoke, we can stand it. The window pane is broken and we're getting air. What's that crackling sound, Bill? Kid, I'm afraid it's more than just smoke. They weren't bluffing. The place is on fire. Get to the window. Right. Oh, we don't dare jump. It's a good, good hundred feet to the ground. What about the bed sheets? Couldn't we tie them together? Oh, there's only two of them. They're not long enough. What do we do, Bill? Uh, let's see if we can get through the door. Come on. Okay. Move this stuff. Right. That's it. Oh, okay. Chairs up the way. There we are. Now, now stand back and I'll open the door. Okay. Oh, oh not a chance. That hall's an inferno. There's only one thing left, Jimmy. We've got to give up. I'll yell out the window. Hey. Hey. We give up. We give up. Didn't they answer? Where are they? Oh, gone, I suppose. They wouldn't hang around after setting a place on fire. Jimmy, look out. The door's coming in. Look out, Looks like we're trapped, Jimmy. Trapped. Doctor. Dr. Corraldo, is there any chance of saving Captain Maddox? That is very difficult to tell. I will do my best. Well, you've got to do everything in your power, Doctor. You've got to. Spare no expense. Of course not, senor. Do you want me to wait here? That will not be necessary. Your friend will be given every attention. All right. I'll be back then in about an hour. I've got to meet an incoming boat. Adieu, senor. Poor Maddox. It's bad for him. Oh, why couldn't I have been up on deck when Escobar attacked him? It would have been a far different story to tell. Well, I suppose there's nothing to do but hope for the best. Yeah. It's that red glow in the sky near the waterfront. It's like a building on fire. It is. Maybe I can be of some help. Look at that thing blaze. Not a chance of saving it. Burn to the ground in five minutes. Hold on. There's someone trapped on the third floor. I saw a face at the window. I'm sure I did. There's only one way I can reach whoever it is. As Superman. I'll duck around to the other end of the building, away from the crowd. There we are. Now, up the side. And through this window. Great Scott, it's blazing in here. Good thing fire doesn't bother me. Now, where would the room be? The room where I thought I saw the face of the window. Now, here's the hall. Three doors leading off it. Have to try them all. Kick the doors in. Here goes. Ah, this room's empty. Well, try the next. Empty. Only one to go. Well, this door's already fallen in. This is the room. I'm too late. Like the heart of a blast furnace. Great Scott, there is someone in the room. A man. And a boy. Both unconscious. 
have the second on those flames. We'll get to them. Why, Bill Wentworth of the Daily Planet. And young Jimmy Olsen. Got to get them out of here alive. It's the last thing I do. One under each arm. There we are. Now, back along the hall to the window where I came in. Before some of those falling timbers land on us. Ah. Ah, there we are. No time to raise the window. Have to kick the rest of the glass through. There, that does it. Now, outside. Get up. Up. And away. Come on, Jimmy. Another glass of water. Oh, Mr. Kent, that's all I've been to. Drinking water. My insides are floating. <laughs> well, you know what Dr. Oh. Corallo said. Plenty of liquid. Being exposed to those hot flames so long dehydrated you. Oh, what does that mean? Well, when you've been dehydrated, most of the water is gone from your body. And the human body must have water to live. So down the hatch with it, young fellow. Okay. That's it. That's the last glass I'll drink. I feel all right, Mr. Kent. Oh, say, how's Bill Wentworth? Well, he got a few bad burns on his hands and legs, but he'll be all right in a day or two. Well, then, suppose you take a deep breath and tell me everything that happened before you were caught in that hotel fire. First, I want to know how we got out. Oh, um... Last thing I remember, the door fell in and the room filled up with fire. Oh, never mind about that. What were you doing in the hotel in the first place? Pete Escobar's men chased us up there from the Paradise Cafe. Yes? I told you how we went to the cafe to hire Escobar's boat. Uh-huh. And how I found that Spanish gold piece on the floor. Yes, but how did Escobar know that you were connected with the Juanita and Professor Thorpe? Oh, well, that was my fault. I-, I told him we wanted the boat to look for the Juanita. Oh. Are you sure, Jimmy, that the gold piece you found was an old Spanish doubloon? Well, positive. Bill Wentworth saw it, and he said it was. Mm-hmm. The date on it was uh, 1784. Well, that makes it old enough, doesn't it? Yep, it's part of Professor Thorpe's treasure, all right. Now we have to figure out a way to get it back from Escobar. Well, I'll help you. No, no, you won't. Huh? Not all the adventure you're going to have on this trip. Oh. Incidentally, young fellow, this is the second time you've stowed away on a plane. What do you think Mr. White's going to say when he finds out? Oh, he won't find out if, if you don't tell him. Oh, I see. Expect me to keep things undercover for you, huh? Mm. Well, I don't know. It all depends on how you behave from now on. If you stay out of trouble, I might be inclined to forget what happened. Oh, Mr. Kent, you're swell. Uh, save the bouquets for later, Jimmy. Now, you stay right here at Dr. Corrales' house while I get out of the docks to meet the one either. Should be in soon. Oh, please let me come along. Oh, no, nothing doing. Oh, please, Mr. Kent. Oh, now you're supposed to rest. But I feel fine, really, I do. Well, are you sure? Absolutely. Never felt better in my life. Hmm. Well, maybe it'll be safer to take you with me. At least I can keep an eye on you. Come along. I keep thanks. Remember now, Jimmy. You get yourself into trouble again, it'll be the last time I ever do it. What happened, Carlos? You took a long time. Mm, to start the fire, Escobar, take time. The fire? See, si, we chased them, the man and the boy, to the hotel. So? They would not come out of the room, so we burned them out. Like rats. You mean the hotel caught on fire? It was the accident. It's too bad the Americanos were on the third floor and could not come down. Yes. <laughs> it's very sad. <laughs> now there is only one left. Thorpe, the professor. Uh, he will not bother us, Escobar. One can never be sure. Pedro has come from the docks to tell me the Juanita has been seen rounding the lighthouse. Would not be safe for us if she came through the channel and anchored in Manao Harbor. But what can we do? Darkness does not come for the three hours. We do not need darkness, Carlos, for what I have planned. It can be done in daylight. You know the channel leading to the harbor. She, she's very narrow, but deep. Correct. Now, open that closet. What do you see inside, Carlos? Uh, two, three. What? Why, are they cannonballs with chains? (laughs) No, Carlo. They are not cannonballs. They are small underwater mines with which to blow up ships. Mines? To blow up ships? See, Carlo. And they are just right for the one eater. Bring them out, but handle them gently. What do you do with them, huh? The channel leading to Manau Harbor is narrow, no? We will place the little mine to cross the channel so that when the Juanita comes through, she cannot miss them. But come, time is short. Here, I will carry four of them. Follow me out the back door. There are people standing on the shore. 
Señor Escobar. He will see us. Who cares? They will think we are fishing. Slow down. Now, you must be very careful, Carlos. I have set the firing pins on the mines. We will not shake them or they will go off and blow us to pieces. Slow down. We come to the channel. Ah, there is the one it has to pass. Offshore. We must work fast. Stop the motor. Now, lift them up. One at a time. But be careful. How many are left, Escobar? Three. You are doing well. Easy, easy. Now the last one. Bueno, Carlos. When she comes into the channel, the Juanita will have a surprise. Start the motor, Escobar. Don't be a fool. You want to hit one of the mines? Wait until the tide carries us away. But the Juanita, Escobar. She's coming for the channel. There is time, mi amigo. Plenty of time. She is still a mile away and moving slowly. All right. Now, start her up. Give her the gun, Carlos. Mr. Kent, I never knew the one either was that big. Oh, she looks like an ocean liner. Well, you wouldn't have thought so if you'd seen the way that hurricane tossed her around. But she's a sturdy little ship, all right. Any other boat would have broken in two. How's your eyesight, Jimmy? Oh, pretty good. Can you see anybody on deck? Mm-hmm. There's a man standing at the rail on the left side. Jimmy, I'm surprised at you talking about the left side of a boat. Huh? Well, there's no such animal. Well, he is on the left side. Ah, you mean the port side. Oh, Oh, sure. <laughs> now, can you see his face? Is he an elderly man with a white goatee? Mm-hmm. I think he is. Now, then it's Professor Thorpe. Will he be surprised to see me? Say, how does a boat come into the harbor? Why, through that narrow channel between those rock jetties over there. Out there where the motorboat is? Yes, that's right. That motorboat had better get out of the way or the one either will hit it. Oh, no, no, don't you worry, Jimmy. What's a motorboat doing out there in the channel anyway? Oh, fishing or testing the depth of the water. Say, hmm? one of them just dropped something overboard. Huh? I said one of the men in the motorboat just dropped something overboard. Oh. Or probably just a channel marker. Hey, look. The motorboat is moving away now. And the one Ina's moving, too. Yep. She's heading right for the channel. Yeah. Hey, do you think they'll get in there safely, Mr. Kent? Oh, sure. Sure she can. I don't know. That channel's awful narrow. I'd be kind of scared if I were on board that big, wide boat. Scared, Jimmy? Oh, there's nothing in that channel to be scared of. What's she blowing for, Mr. Kent? Oh, probably just to announce that she's coming into the harbor. Oh. Oh, say, now, remember, Jimmy, don't mention that hotel fire to Professor Thorpe. Why is that so important? Well, it's not terribly important, but... I just don't want to add to Professor Thorpe's worries. Yeah. After all, if he knew that you and Bill Wentworth were almost burned to death by Escobar and his gang, well, he'd feel as though he were responsible for it. Well, that's silly. Mr. White sent us down to find you and the Juanita. He just ran into trouble right off the reel. You mean Mr. White sent Bill Wentworth down? You smuggled yourself aboard the plane. Oh, I'd rather forget that, if you don't mind. Now, I won't forget it unless you stay out of trouble from now on. Well, he does not far from the channel now. He doesn't look like there's room enough for her to get through. <laughs> Jimmy, huh? you're impossible at times. Why, there's room enough for two boats of one either size and clear sailing right into the harbor. Well, I hope so. Hey, Mr. Kent, hmm? look up the shore to that cove. Isn't that the motorboat we saw fooling around the channel? Yes, what of it? Look at the man kneeling in the bow of the boat. He's watching the one either through binoculars. What's he doing that for? I don't know, Jimmy. Yes. Hmm. You stay right here. I'll be back in a minute. Where are you going? I want to call Dr. Corrado and find out how Bill Wentworth is. Oh. Don't move from that dock. There. Jimmy can't see me behind this building. It's a good thing he noticed that man in the motorboat peering through binoculars. There was one thing he didn't see that I did. The man is Pete Escobar. I'll just change the Superman, sneak up to that cove and find out what Escobar is up to. Luckily, there's nobody around to see me. Now, one quick dash, and I'll be in those woods along the shore. Here goes. There. That's a 
of it. Uh, I can hear them talking from here. Uh, that's Escobar, all right. The other one must be Carlos. I'll creep up a little closer. Why should anything go wrong? Juanita's almost to the channel. Another few minutes. Mines will explode. Mines? Of course they will explode. Did you not play some across the channel? Yes, come on. Mines strung across the channel. Juanita, only a hundred yards from the entrance. I've got to work fast, no matter who sees me. Up! 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 And away! There's only one thing I can do. Dive into the water of the channel and set those mines off. The Juanita can't stop now. It's too late. Even I may be too late. No telling how many of the mines are floating underwater. Now, she's heading into the channel. Down! Down! Now, where are those mines? Ah, here's one. And another. Good thing they can't hurt me. Makes four. Escobar didn't lie. They're strung right across the channel. I think Juanita's trying to stop, but she can't. The tide's carrying her in. And it looks like I cleaned them all out. No, I see two more. The ship's bearing right down on them. I'll have to dive under and get them quickly. There. That does it. Now the Juanita can dock safely. What happened? I heard some explosions. You never saw anything like it. The Juanita was just about at the channel when a man in a red cape and blue tights flew to the air, jumped into the water, and then things began to explode. Hey, what are you talking about? On my word of honor, Mr. Kent, the man in the red cape came out of nowhere. I was watching the Juanita when suddenly I saw him. Mr. Kent, do you think it was... Do you think it could have been... Who, oh, Jimmy? Superman. Superman? Well, who's Superman? Do you remember when Lois Lane was thrown out of an airplane by the yellow mask? Yes. He said a man in a red cape caught her in his arms and saved her. Oh. Jimmy, you don't believe that sort of stuff, do you? I tell you, I saw this with my own eyes. He was flying with his cage spread out like wings. You sure you feel all right, Jimmy? Well, they can't please believe me. Now, we'll talk about it later, Jimmy. The money is docked. Hey, Captain, turn right you? Hello, Professor. All set, follow Yes, man, I can't believe my eyes. What on earth happened to you? How did you get off the one he got? Well, Captain Maddox. Oh, I'll explain everything a little later, Professor. You must be tired now. I had, well, I've been frantic with worry. And then on top of everything, to have those explosions at the channel and to see that man in the water. You see, Mr. Keller was right. There was a man who drove into the water and those explosions. You see? Oh, Professor Thorpe, this is Jimmy Olsen, one of the copy boys in the Daily Planet. Oh. Perry White, my editor, evidently became uneasy because he couldn't locate us by radio. And he sent... Jimmy and Bill Wentworth, a planet reporter, down to find us. Glad to meet you, Professor. How do you do? You did see Superman, didn't you? Uh, I, I don't know what I saw, son. For the last two weeks, all I've been seeing are horrible, ghastly, unbelievable things. You said you saw him in the water and you heard the explosions. You said Jimmy, did. Professor thought is tired. Don't bother him with that now. Okay. And what about Maddox? Is, is he dead? No, Professor. He's going to recover. Oh, good. He's at the doctor's house. So is Bill Wentworth. He had a little accident. Can't you got to explain all this to me? My, my head is whirling like a top. I think the best thing to do is to go to Dr. Corraldo's house. And then you can see for yourself that Captain Maddox is on the road to recovery. Well, anything you say, Kent, but I must have an explanation before I go mad. Oh, you'll get it, Professor. Come on, Jimmy. Get out of the But even as Clark Kent leads Professor Thorpe and Jimmy Olsen to the doctor's house, the sinister, shadowy figure of Carlos follows them through Manau's dark, narrow street. Minutes later, he returns to the back room of the Paradise Cafe, where Pete Escobar maintains headquarters. Well, you found something, Carlos? Si, Escobar. They'll go to the Casa of El Doctor Corraldo, El Medico. How many of them? Three. Two men and the boy. I do not understand how the boy escaped the fire. This time, none of them will escape. I do not understand is the mind going off and the man who flew like a bird. Maybe I'm going crazy. Oh, no, no, Escobar. I saw this man, too. Maybe we are both crazy. We shall see. Now, listen to me. I've written a message. You have Pedro deliver it to them at Caraldo's house. They do not know Pedro. He is to leave it in return. And he is to watch out that he is not followed. Understand? Yes, Escobar. What is this message? Never mind. It's written on the paper in English. 
Find Pedro and have him delivered. Pronto. Yes, Another cup of tea, Professor? No, thank you, Kent. Now, continue with your story. When I left you in the cabin with Maddox, he seemed to be sinking fast from the knife wound Escobar gave him. Yes, and I realized every minute counted that his life was to be saved. I, uh, I heard a, a speedboat coming along, and I, I rushed up on deck and hailed it. Speedboat? I don't know, Bill. Oh, it was there, all right. Well, I got Captain Maddox on board, and we raced into the harbor. There wasn't time to let you know we'd gone. Kent, it sounds like something to dream, but... If you tell me that's what happened, I must believe it. After all, you were waiting on the dock for the Juanita, and Maddox is here at the doctor's house recovering from the knife wound, so your story must be true. Tell me, what... What about the gold? Escobar has it. Jimmy proved that when he found one of the coins. He found it under the table in the back room of the Paradise Cafe. I don't suppose we'll ever get it back. Well, we can't. We're going to make a good attempt, Professor. Feeling that the authorities won't do us any good. That much I can tell you. If they do manage to take it away from Escobar, they'll confiscate it. Yeah, I figured as much. I'm afraid we'll have to tackle Escobar ourselves. No, no way you can find him at the Paradise Cafe. Yes, Jimmy, we know. No, no, but Kenny, he, he is dangerous. He stops at nothing. That murderous attack on Maddox and myself. Yes, and setting the hotel on fire. Jimmy! Fire? What, what was that? Nothing, Professor. Look, I think you and I had better go back to the Juanita and see that everything's ship Huh? And then we can right. discuss some way of recovering the gold. You stay here, Jimmy. Oh, I'll let me come. I said you stay here. And practice remembering a few things. Come on, Professor. Kent, do, do you really think we have a chance? Oh, gee, I couldn't help it if I forgot I wasn't supposed to talk about the fire. You know, I suppose you won't let me do anything. Oh, hang it all. I wish I knew what really happened with those explosions in the water. I'm sure I saw a man in a red cape fly out to the channel and dive in. I bet it was a superman who saved Lois Lane. Well, I'd like to meet him sometime. Oh. You want to see the doctor? No, I got a message for Professor Thorpe. Message for Professor Thorpe? Oh, I'll take it. Thank you. Maybe it's important. I better open it. Yep. Yeah. Holy jumping Wilkins. Look what they said. Professor Thorpe, if you want to get your gold back, go to the cave behind the cemetery. The gold is hidden there. I tell you this because I am an enemy of Pete Escobar. Wow, what a chance to show Clark Kent I can do things on my own. I'll go to the cave, get the gold, and bring it back here. The cave behind the cemetery. All I've got to do is find out where the cemetery is. I'll sneak out and be back before they are. And won't Clark Kent... I still don't quite understand, Kent, what that boy Jimmy is doing here in Manal. Huh? Jimmy Olsen? Yes. Oh, well, he doesn't really belong here. You see, when Perry White, the editor of my paper, couldn't reach us by radio, well, he naturally became worried. Yes, yes, of course. So he sent Bill Wentworth, another reporter, down here by plane to check on our whereabouts. Well, Jimmy, the little devil, stowed away on the plane. Right? Here he is. Oh. And, and what about Wentworth? Well, I told you, Professor, but you've probably forgotten. What? Uh, he's at Dr. Corraldo's house recuperating from a... A little accident. Well, that means we have two patients at the doctor's house. Captain Maddox and your reporter friend. Yes, that's right. But they're both coming along nicely. Yeah, now if we can only figure out some way of getting that Spanish gold back from Escobar, this trip may not be so unsuccessful after all. I think... Oh, say, here we... <laughs> We've walked past Dr. Corraldo two houses back. Hmm? Oh, oh, of course it is. Yeah, I hope Jimmy's kept out of mischief. Ah, here we are. Kent, talking to you has given me renewed hope. I do believe we may yet recover that gold. I'm glad to hear you say that, Professor. Uh, where are the senores? Oh, hello, Juan. Uh, did the doctor return? No, senor. Uh, where, where's Jimmy? Uh, where's the little boy, Juan? Uh, El muchacho. Oh, he go out. Out? Si, senor. All alone? Si, senor. Funny. Uh, all right, Juan, thank you. Gracias. Hmm. Ah, where do you think he went, Kent? I don't quite know, Professor. I gave him explicit orders not to leave this house, and he knows the penalty for disobeying. Well, he can't have gone far. Probably just to the corner. He'll be back soon. Of course. So, you can't keep a young active boy cooped up in a room indefinitely. Oh, I know, but it's getting dark, and Manau is a strange place. I, 
I don't quite like the idea of his being out alone. Oh, come, come, Ken. Don't be too harsh with him. Oh. Let's pay Maddox a visit and see how he's getting along. Come on. I won't feel easy, Professor, until Jimmy comes back. And well may Clark Kent feel uneasy, for at this very moment, Jimmy Olsen is climbing over the rocks behind the Manal Cemetery, searching for the cave mentioned in Pete Escobar's luring message. The sun has already dropped below the horizon, and eerie gray shadows are creeping over the graveyard. Listen. Oh, boy, I'm wondering. I don't know where that cave can be. Pretty well hidden. Oh, even if I do find it, I don't suppose I'll be able to carry the gold back. It's too heavy. Well, at least I can tell Claude Kent and Professor Stop where it is. I don't see anything that even looks like a cave. Wait. Yes, I do. Up ahead. It's a dish. The gold must be inside. Gee, it's dark in here. I should have brought a searchlight. You won't need a searchlight. Huh? Who's there? Grab him, Carlos. Hey, let me go. Let me go. Carry him back, Carlos. Let me go. I can kill you. Hurry up, Carlos. What you wait for? Let me go. I tell you. Let go of me. Go ahead. Yeah. Nobody oh. hear you. Wait, Carlos. Oh. I open the door. Take him inside. Put him down. You can't do this to me. I'll... I know you. You're Pete Escobar. That's right. You're the one who stole the gold from Professor Trump. You know a lot of things, eh? Maybe too much. I know that you're a crook and you better let me out of here. <laughs> Maybe you like it here. Nice room at the end of cave. With oil lamp. You let me out of my friend will take care of you. <laughs> Your friend. Not very brave, you friend. Standing kid. Uh, I'm not a kid and they didn't send me. I came by myself. You came to get the gold, eh? <laughs> Look at it. The corner there. Piled up in boxes. You would like to have it, no? <laughs> well, go ahead, laugh. You won't laugh when Clark Kent gets after you. Clark Kent, huh? I remember Clark Kent. I do not like him. Carlos, open the door. What are you going to do? We are going to leave you here with the gold while we go look for Clark Kent. You can't do that. Adios. Oh, no, no. Quick, Alan, to the cafe. And for the love of heaven, stop pacing up and down the room. The boy will be here shortly. It's been an hour since we returned. I can't stand this any longer. I'm going to look for him. Where, where will you look? I think if I can find Pete Escobar, I'll find Jimmy. Ken, what are you saying? I may be wrong, but it's worth a try. Just stay here in case he comes back. Ken, you're being foolhardy. Don't worry about me, Professor. I'd be foolhardy for Clark Kent. But it isn't foolhardy for Superman. I'm convinced Escobar has something to do with Jimmy's disappearance. There's only one way to find out. From Escobar. He won't recognize me as Superman. My red cape and blue costume will take care of that. All right, Escobar. You asked for it. Up! Up! And away! There's the Paradise Cafe. Escobar's hangout. I'll drop down the rear of it and see whether he's in that back room. There, all right. I can see him through the window. His black-hearted henchman Carlos is with him. And I won't bother to knock. That back door lock looks flimsy. Who's that? Good evening, Escobar. Who are you? What do you want? Never mind who I am. And you know what I want. Nobody makes joke with Escobar. Get down. This is far from a joke. Where is the boy? Jimmy Olsen. Who? You know who, Escobar. The boy you tried to kill by setting fire to the hotel. Where is he? What business is that of yours? Unless I know in a hurry there's going to be trouble. Never trouble for Escobar. Don't move. You're wasting your time, Escobar. That gun in your hand doesn't frighten me. Grab him, Carlos. Look out, Carlos. I warned him. For that, my friend, you die. Not as simple as all that, Escobar. Tell me before I lose my temper and lay you out like I did Carlos. Where is the boy? Listen. Listen. Earthquake. What's that? Earthquake! Earthquake! Hurry up! Hold on! You can't get away with a trick like that. All you're hearing is thunder. No, no! No, no! Earthquake! Earthquake! No, no, Earthquake! Yes, come on. You stay right here until I find out where that boy is. Look! Look! The ceiling! She comes down! Great Scott, you're right! Look out! Oh, 
higher roof collapsed. They're pinned under the timbers, both of them. I've got to get them out. Ah. 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 Oh, Carlos is done for. But Escobar's still alive. Escobar. Escobar. Escobar, listen to me. Where is the boy? Tell me quickly. Behind. Graveyard. Where, Escobar? Where? Behind. Graveyard. Cave. Cave. He's gone. A cave behind a graveyard, eh? Whatever it is, I've got to find it before this earthquake makes it impossible to find anything. Up! Up! And away! I can see the whole town from up here, but no graveyard. I... Wait. Yes, there it is. Faster! Faster! That looks like a cave beyond those rocks. Down! Down! It is the entrance to a cave, but it's all blocked up. Got to work fast. Jimmy's in there. He may be buried under tons of stone. Here goes. Oh, the wake certainly made a mess of things. There. I'm through and into the tunnel. Jimmy! Jimmy! Oh, I hear him. I'm coming, Jimmy! He's behind this heavy wooden door. Locked in. Get away from the door, Jimmy. It's coming down. Oh, Quickly, Jimmy. No time to talk. You hear that rumble? It's an earthquake. Come on. The gold. Professor Dobbs' gold lay on the corner. I'll take it. Run down the tunnel before it collapses. Quick, I'll follow you. Okay. I got the gold. Run faster, Jimmy. The tunnel's caving in behind us. Run. Right. There's a tunnel up ahead. Keep going, Jimmy. Don't trip on any rocks. I won't. Ah, we made it, Jimmy. We made it. We're out. Look at that tunnel. Flat as a pancake. But the earthquake seems to have stopped. Jimmy, what's the matter? You're the luckiest boy in the world. What makes you say that? Me. Jimmy Olsen. Standing here talking to Superman. Gee. Do you always wear that red cape and, and the blue costume? No, Jimmy. Not always. You mean sometimes you wear ordinary clothes like other men? That's right. Then who are you? What's your real name? I can't tell you that now, Jimmy. But someday you may find out. Now I think I'd better be going. Your friend Clark Kent is looking for you, and he'll be here in a few moments. Goodbye, Jimmy. Goodbye, Superman. <laughs> What does Superman mean? Does he intend to reveal his double identity to Jimmy Olsen? To let Jimmy know he is Clark Kent? Don't forget to tune in next time and follow this exciting story with Superman. And remember, tune in the next thrilling installment of the transcription feature, Superman. Look at the sky. Look, it's a bird. It's a plane. It's Superman. Superman is a copyrighted feature appearing in Action Comics magazine.